everyone, this is Chrysanthi from Happy Habitats California, and today we are going to be taking a look at two of California's endangered species. The materials you will need for this lesson are the local species worksheet, the helping endangered species pledge, and something to write with. In our previous lessons, we've talked about what habitats are, how humans affect the environment, and what it means for a species to be endangered. This lesson is going to bring all of those topics together as we look at two endangered animals that could be found in your backyard. First, we are going to talk about the California condor. Now would be a good time for you to get out your local species worksheet. When I go through the information about the California condor, follow along and fill out that information on your sheet. If you need to pause or rewind the video at any time, feel free to do so. California condors are the largest flying bird in North America with a wingspan of up to 10 feet from tip to tip. That's huge. California condors used to live all over the United States and Mexico, but now they only live in a very small region. This is a map of where you can find the California condor today. As you can see, it has a very small range. These condors are scavengers, which means they only eat prey that has already died. Although they look scary, these birds do not hunt. California condors have been endangered for over 50 years, but in 1982, there were only 22 left. Only 22 birds in the entire world. Your class might be bigger than 22. Condors became so endangered for lots of reasons. Their habitat was being destroyed, pollution, and lead poisoning. Condors would eat tiny pieces of plastic that were polluted called micro trash, which is any piece of trash that is smaller than a quarter. This plastic would make the condors very sick. Condors also declined in numbers because of lead poisoning. As I said earlier, California condors are scavengers, which means they eat prey that has already died. When hunters would use bullets that had a lead in them, the condors would get very sick from eating the carcass. Lead is a very dangerous metal, but luckily, lead bullets have been banned in California. The San Diego Zoo in Southern California saw that there were very few California condors left and decided to do something to help. They brought all of the remaining condors to facilities where they could care for the birds and start a breeding program. Because condors don't lay eggs very often, they used a method called double clutching. When a condor lays an egg, it is taken away and cared for by scientists. The condor will see that her egg is missing and lay another one to replace it. This way, the condors were able to produce twice as many chicks. The scientists didn't want the chick that they took away to be raised by humans and get used to them because they wanted to release them back into the wild. So they raised the chicks with puppets. Isn't that crazy? In 1992, the first condors were released back into the wild. Now, there are almost 
300 California condors in the wild. That's a lot more than there were before, but still not a lot. So scientists are making sure to monitor them well. The second local species we're going to take a look at is the Pacific Pocket Mouse. On the same worksheet, fill out the information about the Pacific Pocket Mouse. If you need to pause or rewind the video, you can do that. Just like the condor is the largest flying bird in North America, the Pacific Pocket Mouse is the smallest mouse species in North America. They weigh the same as three pennies. That's really tiny. Pacific pocket mice are found in Southern California along the coast. These mice are super important for seed dispersal. They eat and scatter the seeds of different wild grasses all through their habitat. Unfortunately, because of drought, there have been fewer wild grasses, and the mice don't have very much to eat. That's not good. Another issue the Pacific Pocket Mouse faces is the building of roads and buildings. People will build all of these structures on top of the mice's habitat, and then the mice have nowhere to live. Pause the video now and draw a picture of what the Pacific Pocket Mouse's habitat looks like now. On the screen, I have listed some of the issues that we just talked about that the Pacific Pocket Mice face that you might want to include in your drawing. For a long time, scientists thought that the Pacific Pocket Mouse was extinct and that there were no more of them left in the world. When someone actually found a small group of them and realized that they were not extinct, the San Diego Zoo started a project where they tracked the mice for five years. These mice are super small though, so how did they fit a tracker on them? Scientists put tiny trackers on the backs of the mice. They were able to learn more about the mice's behavior so that they could start a breeding program. Pacific pocket mice like to make burrows in the ground, so scientists had to make special enclosures where they could dig and play in tunnels. Now, the Pacific Pocket Mouse is still endangered, but scientists try to release 200 back into the wild every year. Now would be a good time to pause and draw what the habitat of a Pacific Pocket Mouse is supposed to look like. Keep in mind the reasons they became endangered and try to fix them. If there are any parts of your week worksheet that you haven't filled out yet, pause the video, rewind, and fill them out now. We've learned about two really cool endangered species that are local to California. One was really big and the other was really small. We also learned what scientists did and are doing to help these species, but there is still so much more that can be done. So we are going to write a pledge that shows what we are going to do to help endangered species. Now let's pull out our helping endangered species pledge. The first thing we're going to do is write our name in the blank after I. Now this is just showing that we are the ones making the pledge and sort of promising to do the thing that we write in this blank down here. On the rest of these lines, 
we are going to write one or two ways we can help save endangered species. In past lessons, we've talked about a couple, but we also talked about some in this lesson with the California condor and the Pacific pocket mouse. The California condor is endangered because of pollution. The Pacific pocket mouse is endangered because of drought. I have written some things that you can do that will help save endangered species. So you can write saving water by turning off the sink when I brush my teeth because saving water helps to prevent droughts, not littering and picking up trash because doing that limits pollution, recycling plastic bottles and aluminum cans if we are recycling instead of throwing things away, we also limit pollution. Educating others about what they can do to help endangered species. Because the more people that are helping, the more species we can save. So these are all great examples of how you can help endangered species. If you can think of something else you want to pledge to do, you can also write that down. I am just going to write oh, saving water by turning off the sink. Let me add another text. When, oh, when I brush my teeth. So you can go ahead and write in what you are going to pledge to do right here. And this is just a good reminder of something that you can do every single day to help save endangered species all over the world. I hope you learned a lot about local species in this Happy Habitats California video. And I hope you continue learning about the world around you.